and we're uh, getting reports of a plane crash in the World Trade Center in New York. You can see the pictures there. It's one of New York's tallest buildings. That's all the information we know at the moment, but as you can see, it is a considerable collision and there is a large fire. That's all the information we have at the moment, but we'll be back with more details in just a short while at the top of the hour. As we come on air, we have serious news of a major possible air crash in the United States. A plane appears to have crashed into one of New York's tallest buildings, the World Trade Center. As you can see, those are pictures of smoke pouring out of a gaping hole in the upper floors of the World Trade Center. It is in the downtown area of Manhattan and is one of the most heavily populated office buildings in New York. All we know at this moment is that uh, there has been a plane crash in the, um, in the morning time in New York. The plane smashed into one of the twin towers of the New York World Trade Center about half an hour ago. That's the information that we've got. And you can see the smoke and flames billowing from the building. One eyewitness said that it was a twin engine plane, possibly a 737, which flew straight into the World Trade Center. It's believed that uh, some bits of the plane may still be embedded in the building. For viewers who are just joining us at the top of the hour, we're watching pictures of um, smoke billowing out of the World Trade Center in New York, the result of a plane crash, it's believed, which took place about half an hour ago in New York. An eyewitness said there was a huge explosion. They thought, in fact, that the blast had come from inside. Pictures, as I said, of the World Trade Center on fire as a result of a plane crash into the upper stories of one of the tallest buildings in New York. We have no immediate word at the moment on injuries or fatalities in the disaster. It happened shortly before 9 a.m. local time. One eyewitness said the plane was coming in low and it looked like it hit at a slight angle. Large holes are visible in two sides of the building. It's a 110-story building, one of the landmark twin towers in the southern part of Manhattan. If you're just joining us, um, we're watching pictures of the uh, World Trade Center on fire in New York, the result of a plane crash by what's thought to have been a twin engine plane, possibly a 737, which appears to have flown directly into the World Trade Center, flying low. No news at the moment of injuries or fatalities. As you can see, there's a considerable fire there. We've got uh, two large holes on two sides of the World Trade Center. It's a 110-story building. Let's get the latest now. The BBC's Jim Fish joins me. Jim, what can you tell us? Well, very few more details than what you've already said, um, Nisha. All we know is that uh, it's described as a passenger plane. We don't know. Uh, how many passengers it was carrying. Uh, it does seem to have entered the, uh, the uh, trade tower very high up, and there are gaping holes on both sides of the tower. It looks as if it's uh, penetrated right through the structure of it. Um, we don't know precisely how many floors are affected. We don't know the number of casualties or injuries, um, but it is quite clearly a major disaster. It's the um, North Tower of New York's World Trade Center, which we're looking at at the moment, ablaze with um, thick smoke coming out of two sides of the building, the result of a plane crash by what's thought to be a twin-engined jet plane, possibly a 737. The accident is reported to have taken place at 9 a.m. local time. Joining us now on the phone from New York is Steve Evans, who was, I believe, 
in the building at the time. Steve, what can you tell us about what happened this morning? We're running away very, very quickly. There are more explosions further down the building. Uh, it was calm until we came on the air now, but I'm now looking up at this building, and there is bill smoke billowing from the very top, but then there is a fire and an explosion about 20 stories further down. Uh, I was at the base of the building when it happened. There was one huge bang, and the building physically shook. Then another two or three bangs, and the building again shook, and people ca came screaming past me. At the moment, uh, it looks as if both buildings are on fire. Clear, clearly, the thing is out of control. Uh, as I say, there is smoke billowing out from further and further down the building, and people are simply moving back. They don't know what has happened. Initially, the assumption was that it was a bomb, People have been coming past me now saying, no, it was an aircraft which hit the building. More than that, I cannot say, apart from to tell you that people here are very, very frightened. People are crying. People are shaking. They've stopped running away from the building. They are now walking away. There is moisture raining down from a clear sky. I only presume that comes from the disaster which is going on above me as I speak. It must be a very busy scene, Steve. Are there a lot of people there? Well, there are a lot of people. Uh, the man whose phone it is is asking me, he's, he's evacuating the shop and I have to get off, I'm afraid, because he wants his phone back uh, and we have to leave. I'll stay with it here. Um, there are people who are very, very frightened. Clearly, this is a very high, it is one of the tallest buildings in the world. There is an uncontrollable event involving explosions and fire going on above us. People simply don't know what's happening. An awful lot of people are just getting as far away as they possibly can. Steve Evans, thank you for joining us from the World Trade Center. Hello. So clearly chaos there. Um, the uh, explosions still continuing. At the moment, it's not really clear whether there was a plane crash or exactly what went on, Jim. Well, we are getting reports um, that a twin-engined jet liner uh, was jet airliner, was the aircraft involved. That hasn't been confirmed. That is coming from an eyewitness. Um, in terms of the, uh, we are seeing both, it seems that both towers are affected by this. It could be that the aircraft went through one, right through, uh, and uh, the debris has affected the other tower as well. Obviously, what we don't know is uh, what the emergency services are managing to do. There are, surprisingly at the moment, no signs of helicopters around the towers. Th maybe that means that uh, the emergency services are already on the spot within the tower, but that by the look of the damage there, uh, they will have uh, great difficulty getting uh, within range of that, uh, that fire inside the towers, 110 stories high. Uh, the the right-hand tower, it looks like the top 10 or possibly even more stories are affected. Lower down on the left-hand tower, um, it could be even more stories are, are affected. If you've just joined us, we're just looking at uh, pictures from the World Trade Center in New York which is ablaze as a result of a plane crash, a plane flying in low, which went into one of the towers, possibly both of the towers, because clearly now both of them are on fire. You can see extensive damage there. This accident took place about half an hour ago at 9 a.m. local time in New York. The World Trade Centers are very busy, office blocks, and as you can see, the, the fires are still raging. We heard from an eyewitness a short while ago that people were very frightened and running from the scene and that the explosions there were still out of control, that explosions were still taking place at the World Trade Center as a result of these, this plane crash. There are some reports too, unconfirmed, that a second plane might also have crashed into the World Trade Center. Jim Fish is here with me in the studio. It's interesting that we're not seeing any rescue helicopters at the moment, isn't it, Jim? Yes. Now, we can only assume that uh, there are uh, emergency operations going on inside those towers as we speak. Uh, of course, they were built to rigorous safety specifications. They will have systems which can enable them to reach uh, an accident, or a disaster of this kind, very high up. Uh, these were the, the world's tallest buildings when they were constructed. They are no longer, but they are among the world's tallest. So there will be systems in place there, emergency backup systems, even if the lifts are not working. There will, there will be uh, mechanical ways in which they can at least try to approach 
the scene of, of, of the accident. But it is surprising at the moment that there are uh, no helicopters around, uh, flying around there, po possibly uh, you know, trying to get at the seat of, of, of the accident. We've got some pictures um, that have also just come in of a second plane crash crashing into the other tower at World Trade Center. You can see a huge explosion there. So a double plane accident at the World Trade Center in New York this morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, at a very busy time, at a very busy um, set of um, tower blocks. We have no word at the moment of fatalities. Let's just um, take another look at those pictures of a second plane crash going into the other tower block at the World Trade Center. A huge explosion there and a most unfortunate event. We have no word at the moment of fatalities, but they are very, very busy office blocks and it all happened in the morning at a very busy time. Seeing those pictures, I think one would have to ask, uh, one accident is extraordinary in itself, but two, uh, if that is a second aircraft striking the towers, one would have to ask the question whether this is deliberate sabotage. Bearing in mind that the World Trade Center was the target of a uh, sabotage attempt to bomb blast um, a few years ago, I think uh, this must be now in the minds of uh, certainly officialdom in the United States whether this, uh, this is in fact uh, not an accident but deliberate. Yes, um, Islamic um, militants were responsible for a large uh, bomb explosion at the World Trade Center a few years ago. And um, of course, it's too early to tell at the moment, but it certainly raises the question with two plane crashes into the World Trade Center at such a busy time, whether in fact this is a deliberate event and not an accident. For viewers who are just joining us here on BBC World, we're looking at pictures of the Twin Towers in New York, of the World Trade Center, which are ablaze as a result of two small planes which flew directly into the upper stories of the World Trade Center. We'll just show you pictures of the second plane crash which took place a short while ago, aimed directly at the, s the second World Trade Center, the, the southern block of the World Trade Center. And you can see an enormous fire there. It's at a very busy time of day, right at the upper stories. We heard from an eyewitness a short while ago that the explosions as a result of those direct hits were still going on. The situation at the World Trade Center was out of control. The World Trade Center, one of New York's big landmarks, looks like it's been the de deliberate target of a sabotage attempt, a deliberate terrorist attack on New York's World Trade Center. Joining us now is our New York correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what can you tell us? Well, there's, of course, huge speculation here about what has happened. The two towers of the World, so World Trade Center, those two famous towers, both on fire. We do know that uh, about nine minutes before the top of the hour, a first plane appeared to crash into the upper floors of one of the, one of the towers. And then within about 18 minutes later, a second plane or a second explosion happened. But there's, of course, huge speculation already about wh how on earth this could happen. In 1993, of course, there was a, a major bomb explosion. It must bring back horrible memories of that. Of course it does, and that's why uh, people are thinking how on earth could this have happened already. Some commentators are speculating that there was some form of missile involved. Of course, there's no confirmation at all of anything like that. Uh, people are talking, was it a deliberate navigational error? Of course, this all refers back to the February 1993 bombing of the World Trade Towers, in which six people were killed and more than 1,000 people were injured. And that's, of course, a, a terrorist attack. Any word of fatalities or injuries, Jane? 
Not at all, but obviously this is going to be quite a serious number of injuries. We don't know what planes were traveling, how many people were on them, if any, of course, apart from a pilot. There's really no information at all. People here in New York just glued to live pictures unfolding on the television screens. This, these towers, just a symbol of New York, and amazing pictures of, of course, the, the plane going through almost one of the towers and just this massive explosion. Jane, the time of day for this attack, would it have been as um, office workers were starting their day or too early for that? Uh, it would have caught quite a number of, um, of office workers. The Port Authority headquarters, a big public service agency in New York, of course, in one of those twin towers. And also New York's commuter airports, very, very busy around that time of day, people going to Washington, to, to Boston, flying out of the city. So with no information at the moment, nobody's got any idea of how many people could have been hurt or injured or, or killed. Have the authorities said whether any kind of warning was received about this kind of possible attack? Certainly that is not on the uh, agenda at the moment. Nobody's talking of any kind of warning. But it must be said that people in New York have been quite conscious that since the American embassy bombers were sentenced here and one is um, due still to be sentenced this week, that there could be some kind of uh, revenge involvement, of course, because of this 1993 attack. Of course, at this stage, it is um, speculation as to who or what might be behind this attack. But tell us, Jane, at this stage, what kind of um, reaction are we getting from eyewitnesses as to what exactly happened? Well, there's some confusion, you know, people talking about um, possibly some kind of missile. Was it one plane? Was it two? But, of course, we know those bare details of the second plane or the second object going through and exploding uh, the second tower. But uh, eyewitnesses we haven't heard much from yet. Um, I think there will be the shock and disbelief. I mean, it's like a, a scene from a film almost. It, it can't, doesn't seem to be real to New Yorkers who I can see just glued to their television screens. Jane, we're just going to remind viewers of what we're looking at at the moment and uh, run pictures that we've got of a second plane which uh, flew directly into the World Trade Center in New York, causing an enormous explosion. Earlier, another plane had flown into the second block of the World Trade Center. This took place at about 9 a.m. New York time, just as office workers would have been gathering for the start of their day. Jane, why is it that um, the World Trade Center has proved to be such a target for these kind of attacks? Well, we don't know if this is an attack at all, though the pictures of that second plane heading right towards the tower will, of course, raise suspicions. This is very, very early days, but it could be a navigational error as well. We really don't know. These are all the things that are being talked about at these very early stages. But those towers, like buildings like the Empire State Building, they say New York, and they say also New York's financial dominance and America's financial dominance. So. Perhaps that will turn out to be a clue as the investigation, which will have to follow this, of course, uh, uh, comes up with something. We're looking, picture, looking at pictures of the World Trade Center ablaze in New York, the result of two planes which went into the side of the World Trade Centers in the upper stories. It's not clear at the moment whether this was deliberate, though that is the suspicion. Tell us a bit more about the um, attack on the World Trade Center in 1993 and who was found guilty for that, Jane. Hello, hello. I think we've... Um, oh, Ash Ragen, an eyewitness from, uh, the, f to the attack, joins us now. Ash, what did you see? What can you tell us about what's going on? Well, I just got off the train uh, right in the belly of the World Trade Center, the train that was getting me in from home this morning. And first, there's just a, 
a, a tremendous smell of gasoline and petroleum. But we just figured that was a sort of a train situation. So we were making ourselves up rather calmly on those large escalators, and suddenly there was a sort of a panic run by the rest of the commuters, and then there was a huge uh, explosion. And as we sort of rushed out of the building, we saw what looked like a ticker tape parade, papers and streamers flowing everywhere. It just uh, looked so surreal, but then the sheer fear and, I guess, the panic of the situation, but most of us just ran to side corridors and stuff like that outside on the street. And then moments later, there was another explosion. So all we could see was a tremendous pall of smoke and, and, and certainly fire uh, under that smoke in, in one of the towers of the building. Uh, but I, was, uh, I got the impression that as I kept running towards my office, more and more people were saying that the second tower had caught in fire as well. I had no idea as to the planes and so on and so forth. We just thought it was some sort of an explosion or, or a regular fire. But then again, all of downtown looks like a whole mass of people on the street. Trucks, cars all just strewn around, a pall of black smoke that looks like a tornado uh, climbing over the rest of Wall Street. I can actually now see from my window, I'm now in my office, a little away from the World Trade Center, about a block away. And I could see through my window, and I could see just just humanity right downstairs, uh, just strewn with people, cars and trucks and so on and so forth, with lots of confusion. Uh, and I, I guess I still don't know what is going on there. It's a very, very busy time of morning, of course, isn't it, Ash? Exactly. You couldn't have picked, uh, uh, well, yes, uh, a busier time this morning. Uh, so that is really unfortunate. I, I just hope and I pray for those people in those two or three floors or perhaps even more floors that were affected the World Trade Center. This is uh, such a stark coincidence to me because I was there when the when the explosion went off in the World Trade Center many, many years ago, and I had to walk down 63 floors from the 63rd floor of World Trade Center number two with the rest of my colleagues, uh, and that was then. And today, I happened to be in the same building. How could that possibly be? The same building right at the belly of the building getting off the train. How many, how many um, floors appear to be affected? Uh, for just from a, a sort of a quick visual uh, glance at the building, when I was outside the building, it looked more like six or seven with a real heavy fire and a thick black, uh, black ball of smoke. But apparently now, uh, I've been hearing this from people on the street. I'm not sure how credible those uh, observations are, that it's clearly more floors and certainly another building as well, another tower, the second tower. Ash Rajan, thank you very much for joining us. And we've got uh, another eyewitness to that... Um, accident or explosion at the World Trade Center. Jane Beresford joins us now. Jane, what can you tell us? I was standing down on the um, Battery Park a ferry terminal just waiting to catch a ferry actually across to Ellis Island and just heard a huge explosion. It's about 8.30 behind me. I thought perhaps the building was being demolished, but in fact, um, you saw there were just towers of smoke coming out within minutes. And again, we still thought it was just a building demolished. There wasn't any great sort of um, panic at that time. And then uh, you saw uh, flames raging through the building, and then approximately sort of 15, 20 minutes later, a plane flew down right above us, so very, very close to our heads, and smashed right into the other tower. The massive explosion, and people screaming, and sort of panic. There wasn't even many um, fire ambulances and things like that on the street. It all happened so quickly. And the emergency services response now? They, they are on scene now, but um, it was, it seemed to, people just seemed to be stunned. There seemed to be nothing happened while this sort of first explosion had happened, and there was sort of this sort of silence and nothing there. And then all of a sudden all the um, ambulances and fire engines came down onto the streets, and, this, this, uh, and the most shocking thing was this plane just coming, you know, literally right above our heads and just smashed right into the second building. It was like something out of a, you know, film. You just couldn't believe what was happening. You actually saw the plane going into the side of the building? Smashed into the side of the building. I mean, you thought it was going to swerve to the left or the right to try and avoid it. It was so low, you, kn you knew it was on a collision course with the building, but it just seemed to be he ed aiming, aiming, heading right for it. Of course, at the moment, it's too early to tell what was behind it, but so far as you could make out, did it look like an accident? No, it looked like it was, I mean, you, d you know, you just don't get planes. It was, a it was quite a large plane. It didn't look, it was low down in the sky in Manhattan. You know, you're not used to seeing planes that low in the sky in Manhattan, and it just was heading straight for the tower. Jane Hello. Beresford, thank you so much for joining us. We're looking at pictures of the World Trade Center, which is ablaze as a result of two planes which appear to have flown straight into the side of the World Trade Center in New York.
It's too early to tell what has caused this, but uh, let me remind you that there was a terrorist bomb explosion in the building in 1993. Eyewitnesses We're also getting reports that uh, two United Airlines planes may have been hijacked. We're hearing that uh, the U.S. President George Bush will speak later on about the World Trade Center crash in Washington. Officials say the FBI is investigating reports of plane hijackings as well as the crashes. Joining us now from Washington is our correspondent, Stephen Speech. Stephen, what can you tell us about the events in New York this morning? Well, I think a huge shock here for everybody, not just in New York, not just in Washington, but right across the country. Uh, these two towers, the tallest buildings in New York, a symbol of the city's prowess. This is, of course, the, you know, the world's great financial center and the country's great business center. I think a huge shock for everybody. And as, as seems increasingly likely, this does appear to have been something deliberate. It, it seems hard to believe that uh, two planes uh, could have crashed into the two towers of the World Trade Center by accident within minutes of each other. If indeed this was a deliberate attack, then I think this is going to cause a huge shock. And I think it will increase the sense, perhaps, uh, for Americans of their vulnerability to these sorts of attacks, which of course have been very rare on American soil. Any word yet of fatalities? We don't have any word. The attacks came right at the start of the business day. It's possible uh, just after, just after 8.30, it seems, before 9 o'clock anyway. So it's possible that not too many people were in the building. But of course, uh, again, once again, we're, we're speculating here. But uh, people I in New York and the States do tend to get to work pretty early. So uh, it's unfortunately, it's possible that there were many people in the building. And we simply don't know uh, what is going on. One can only imagine the devastation uh, in, in, the, in, those, in those towers so high up, so far off the ground. Uh, one thing we do, do seem to know is that there wasn't too much debris on the ground, so it seems that at least people around the World Trade Center haven't been affected too badly. No fatalities on the ground, it seems. We're looking at pictures of the World Trade Center ablaze in New York as a result of two planes crashing into the World Trade Center. It looks as if it was a deliberate act, but it is too early to tell. Some reports suggest that six people were killed in the accident or the explosion and a thousand people injured. It happened at about nine o'clock in the morning, New York time. We've also got some pictures of the second plane which crashed into the side of the World Trade Center. There you can see it. It looks as if it was heading straight for one of the towers of the World Trade Center, flying low and it resulted in an enormous explosion. Some eyewitnesses have told us that the explosion sounded as if the whole building was coming down. Six or seven floors seem to have been affected on each of the buildings. Stephen Speech is with us from Washington. Stephen, we're expecting the president to speak about it soon. Yes, I think uh, this will be in a very important moment, I think, for, for the president. I think he'll feel that he has to say something about this. The eyes of the whole nation are on what's going on in New York, and then I think the eyes of the whole nation will be on him. And, of course, uh, it'll be interesting to see how he responds. Uh, it's possible that the authorities here in Washington know more about this uh, than we do. It's possible they may have had some indication there was going to be some sort of attack. Uh, but it's equally possible that they, that they don't. It's equally possible that, uh, that they, they, they don't know any more than we do and that they too are, are as it were, groping in the dark uh, to see exactly what led, up to this, uh, what led up to this explosion. And therefore, it'll be very interesting to hear what the president has to say. We're also getting some reports of um, possible plane hijacking, United Airlines planes. Anything you can tell us about that, Stephen? We've also got reports coming in that at the same time as this attack on the World Trade Center by two planes, there may have been a possible hijacking of a United Airlines plane, possibly two planes. Stephen Speech joins us from Washington. Stephen, can you tell us any more about these possible plane hijackings? Those reports are being investigated by the FBI. Now, if they turn out to be true, then uh, that will once again lend weight, of course it will lend absolute weight 
the idea that this was uh, an entirely uh, deliberate attack. And it would seem, uh, if it was an attack, very, very well planned and well coordinated by people who were not afraid to lose their lives uh, I I in the process. So I think, uh, you know, all the evidence pointing towards some si something very coordinated, very deliberate, and uh, powerfully symbolic in terms of its, uh, its significance for American interests. For viewers who've just joined us, you're looking at the New York skyline with the World Trade Center right in the middle, a landmark tower of New York, which has, been, which has come under attack from two planes which crashed apparently deliberately into the side of the World Trade Center. The World Trade Center, as we speak, is ablaze. The explosions appear to be continuing. One eyewitness told us that the explosions were continuing out of control. There are people fleeing from the scene. It's a very busy time of morning at the moment. The explosions took place about half an hour, 45 minutes ago, 9 a.m. New York time. It's not yet clear whether they were indeed deliberate acts or whether it was an accident. One eyewitness told us that she didn't think it was an accident because the plane was flying low and appeared to have gone straight into the side of the building. And this is what Jane Beresford said to us. Let's take another look at um, the pictures of the second plane which flew into the side of the building just moments after an earlier plane had flown into the World Trade Center in New York. It was flying low and it appears to have been headed straight for the building. As you can see, several stories of that building are ablaze. Jane Beresford, an eyewitness, told us what she saw. I was standing down on the um, Battery Park a ferry terminal, just waiting to catch a ferry actually across to Ellis Island, and just heard a huge explosion. It was about 8.30 behind me. I thought perhaps the building was being demolished, but in fact, um, we saw there were just towers of smoke coming up within minutes. And again, we still thought it was just a building demolished. There wasn't any great sort of um, panic at that time. And then uh, you saw uh, flames raging through the building, and then approximately sort of 15, 20 minutes later, a plane flew down right above us, so very, very close to our heads and smashed right into the other tower. The massive explosion, people screaming, a sort of panic. There wasn't even many um, fire ambulances and things like that on the scene. And discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at uh, Booker Elementary you School for their hospitality. President Bush um, uh, today is due to make a statement tragedy. on the plane crash. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the f and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. That was the U.S. President George Bush talking about an apparent terrorist attack. His comments on two planes which appear to have deliberately flown into the side of the World Trade Center in New York. Landmark towers in New York. An apparent terrorist attack, he called it. Stephen Sveech is in Washington. Stephen, it does rather look like a suicide attack, doesn't it? It does indeed. It, it does seem hard to, 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 to think that it's anything other than uh, a suicide attack. In, indeed, a double suicide attack by uh, two people flying planes. We don't know if anyone else was in them, possibly on their own. And a short but powerful statement there from President Bush, uh, I think quite understandably from his point of view, keeping it very short and succinct, succinct, but nonetheless making it very clear he believes this is what he describes as a terrorist attack. He's saying the full resources of the federal government will be brought to bear to hunt down uh, those folks, as he called them, who perpetrated the attack. 
and he said terrorism uh, in the United States will not stand. So there we are. We've had, we have it from the chief ex executive himself. Not much doubt here from the authorities. This was indeed a deliberate attack. That this was foul play, in other words. Absolutely, and I think looking at the evidence, uh, it does seem pretty hard to reach any other conclusion. The idea that you were going to, you'd have uh, two planes uh, coincidentally flying accidentally into uh, the two tallest buildings on, the, on Manhattan Island in the city of New York, it does seem pretty hard to believe. And therefore, I think all the evidence pointing, as President Bush suggested, uh, towards an attack. And now, of course, people will start to wonder who were the attackers, where did they come from, but very, very early to say at this stage. Just to remind you, if you've just joined us, we're looking at pictures of the World Trade Center ablaze in New York, the result of two planes which flew directly into the Twin Towers, one of the landmarks in New York. It happened at 9 a.m. local time, a very busy time. And this is what one of the eyewitnesses, Jane Beresford, told us. I was standing down on the um, Battery Park a ferry terminal, just waiting to catch a ferry actually across to Ellis Island, and just heard a huge explosion. It was about 8.30 behind me. I thought perhaps the building was being demolished, but in fact, um, we saw there were just towers of smoke coming out within minutes. And again, we still thought it was just a building demolished. There wasn't any great sort of um, panic at that time. And then uh, you saw uh, flames raging through the building, and then approximately sort of 15, 20 minutes later, a plane flew down right above us, so very, very close to our heads and smashed right into the other tower. The massive explosion, people screaming, a sort of panic. There wasn't even many um, fire ambulances and things like that on the street. It all happened so quickly. And the emergency services response now? They, they are on scene now, but um, it was, it seemed to, people just seemed to be stunned. There seemed to be nothing happened while this sort of first explosion had happened. And there was sort of this sort of silence and nothing going And then all of a sudden all the um, ambulances and fire engines came down onto the streets. And this, this, uh, the most shocking thing was this plane just coming, you know, literally right above our heads and just smashed right into the second building. It's like something out of a, you know, film. You just couldn't believe what was happening. You actually saw the plane going into the side of the building? Smashed into the side of the building. I mean, you thought it was going to swerve to the left or the right to try and avoid it. It was so low, you, kn you knew it was on a collision course with the building. But it just seemed to be he ed aiming, aiming, heading right for it. Of course, at the moment, it's too early to tell what was behind it. But so far as you could make out, did it look like an accident? It looked like it was, I mean, you, you know, you just don't get planes. It was, a, it was quite a large plane. It didn't look, it was low down in the sky in Manhattan. You know, you're not used to seeing planes that low in the sky in Manhattan. And it just was heading straight for the tower. Jane Beresford, an eyewitness to the attack on the World Trade Center in New York. President Bush said that it was an apparent terrorist attack. And the FBI has called it foul play. Stephen Speech joins us from Washington. Stephen, what's the latest information you have? Well, one of the, uh, one of the latest information, uh, pieces of information that we have is that the FBI are investigating reports that uh, two, uh, L uh, two planes belonging to United Airlines were hijacked uh, before, the, before the incident, before the attack. And therefore, that will, will of course, be one line of inquiry uh, in this investigation. Uh, where were the planes hijacked? Uh, who, who were the hijackers? And that may, of course, provide some sort of evidence as to what brought this about. And I think inevitably people are going to be start talking about, about the Middle East, about you know, possible uh, motives for, for this attack. But very early to say. There doesn't appear to have been any sort of warning, does there? No, I mean, I, I'm sure the authorities here receive uh, warnings about uh, threats to U.S. interests all, all, all over the world uh, all, all the time, in a sense. I mean, we, we, we've had attacks on U.S. targets uh, in Yemen. We've ha we had att those attacks on the uh, embassies in Tanzania and Kenya back in 1998. Uh, but incidents like of, of this kind on U.S. soil, extremely rare. And we have to go back to uh, the 1993 uh, <coughs> bombing of the World Trade Center, the same building the uh, 1995 o Oklahoma bombing by Timothy McVeigh, and then uh, the attack on, at the Atlanta Olympics in 1996, although uh, it's still not entirely clear uh, what uh, brought that about. But incidents, like, uh, incidents of this kind, very, very rare indeed here. And therefore, I think that, that really adds to the, the sense of shock. And I think just to see those two, the two towers, the tallest buildings uh, in New York, symbols of American power and American capitalism, if you like, to see those two towers on fire, I think that is, a, that is a pretty chilling sight for people around the country. 
Stephen Siege, thank you for that. Those two towers on fire down in New York, the World Trade Center, the result of an apparent terrorist attack. That's what uh, the U.S. president said. Two planes crashed into the Twin Towers as a result of what appears to be a deliberate suicide mission. Joining us now from Washington is Neil Livingston, a terrorism expert. Does this look like an apparent terrorist attack to you? Well, I think it does. Uh, you have to remember that uh, some years ago we had a, a plane crash in the Empire State Building in the fog, and uh, that was clearly an accident. This is a clear day. Uh, the, the towers are clearly visible. We have two crashes uh, 19 minutes apart, and now we have unconfirmed rumors that one of or unconfirmed reports that one of the planes may have been hijacked. So everything points to a terrorist attack right now. The reports you're getting are that a plane might have been hijacked and then diverted onto this. We have unconfirmed reports at, that, at this moment. Why is the World Trade Center being targeted in this way, do you think? Well, it's a symbol of American uh, strength and uh, the, uh, the, the American capitalism. just been announced that the, uh, that the stock market has suspended trading. Uh, and as a consequence, it, it, it's one of those targets that is at the very heart of how our system works. And if you can shut down the stock market in addition to creating a high um, uh, loss of life, then uh, you can uh, bring uh, extraordinary uh, uh, publicity to whatever your cause is. The security um, around the World Trade Center must be very high, I suppose, as a result of the bombing back in 1993. Well, it's not as uh, high as you might think. I've been there many times, and obviously there are so many thousands of people, the, some say 70 to 100,000 people a day visit some part of the World Trade Center, work there, and as a consequence, um, uh, 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 this is one of those places that uh, you have to have free egress and uh, access to the building. So there are trade-offs with security, and certainly the airspace around it it's very easy to divert out of the flight pattern uh, going into LaGuardia, uh, one of the surrounding airports, and veer off and go toward the World Trade Center. We've got uh, reports coming in on the Reuters news agency that a Palestinian group has claimed responsibility for the New York World Trade Center attacks. Those are unconfirmed, I must stress. Um, what's your reaction to that? Well, I suspect that we may see the, this um, as Islamist terrorism. And, of course, if that's the case, I think that there's going to be hell to pay uh, in the, the weeks and months ahead. I don't think that this is the kind of terrorist attack that the United States will take uh, uh, quietly. I think it uh, basically amounts to a declaration of war, and I think it will be seen that way by the Bush administration. Well, President Bush, speaking just a short while ago, said that the U.S. would hunt down those who committed the attack on the World Trade Center. But it's not going to be easy. Well, it won't be easy, but I, I suspect that um, we may be able to, uh, to hunt them down. We've been able to do that in other recent terrorist cases. And if we find the governments of Harvard are supported the terrorists in any way, I think th those governments become extremely vulnerable at that point. For viewers who've just joined us, we're going to show you pictures of the second plane as it flew in and appears deliberately to have gone straight into the side of one of the towers. Earlier, another plane had targeted the other tower. You can see an enormous explosion as a dire direct consequence of that hit. An eyewitness told us it did not look like an accident to her. Still on the line with us is um, terrorism expert Neil Livingston. The second such attack against the World Trade Center it must be really quite horrific for the people there at the moment. Well, we can only imagine what it's like. We have some early reports of uh, absolute pandemonium, absolute chaos, uh, injured people, smoke filling the buildings. Uh, both towers, as you know, are on fire. Uh, I think that the loss of life is going to be horrific, and uh, uh, we can only speculate right now on, uh, on, on the casualties, and we c they have our prayers, of course. Neil Livingston, thank you for joining us. And Ash Raven, uh, who was uh, an eyewitness to the earlier explosion, joined us, and this is what he told us. 
Well, I just got off the train right in the belly at the World Trade Center, the train that was getting me in from home this morning. And first, there's just a, a, a tremendous smell of gasoline and petroleum. But we just figured that was a sort of a train situation. So we were making ourselves up rather calmly on those large escalators. And suddenly, there was a sort of a panic run by the rest of the commuters. And then there was a huge uh, explosion. And as we sort of rushed out of the building, we saw what looked like a ticker tape parade. Paper and streamers flowing everywhere. It just sort of looked so surreal, but then the sheer fear and, I guess, the panic of the situation, where most of us just ran to side corridors and stuff like that outside on the street. And then moments later, there was another explosion. So all we could see was a tremendous pall of smoke and, and, and certainly fire uh, under that smoke in, in one of the towers of the building. Uh, but I, was, uh, I got the impression that as I kept running towards my office, more and more people were saying that the second tower had caught in fire uh, as well. I had no idea as to the planes and so on and so forth. I just thought it was some sort of an explosion or, or a regular fire. But then again, all of downtown looks like a whole mass of people on the street. Trucks, cars were just strewn around, a pall of black smoke that looks like a tornado uh, climbing over the rest of Wall Street. I could actually you now see from my window, I'm now in my office, a little away from the World Trade Center, about a block away. And I could see through my window and I could see just just humanity right downstairs, uh, just strewn with people, cars and trucks and so on and so forth, lots of confusion. Uh, and I, I guess I still don't know what is going on there. It's a very, very busy time of morning, of course, isn't it, Ash? Uh, well, yes, a uh, busier time this morning. Uh, so that is really unfortunate. I, I just hope and I pray for those people in those two or three floors or perhaps even more floors that were affected the World Trade Center. This is uh, such a stark coincidence for me because I was there when the, f when the explosion went off in the World Trade Center many, many years ago and I had to walk down 63 floors from the 63rd floor of World Trade Center number two with the rest of my colleagues. Uh, and that was then. And today I happened to be in the same building. How could that possibly be the same building right at the belly of the building getting off the train. How many, how many um, floors appear to be affected? Uh, for, just from a, a sort of a quick visual uh, glance at the building when I was outside the building, it looked more like six or seven with a real heavy fire and a thick black, uh, black ball of smoke. But apparently now uh, I've been hearing this from people on the street. I'm not sure how credible those uh, observations are, but it's clearly more floors and certainly another building as well, another tower, the second tower. Eyewitness Ash Raven. Now we're going to cross to um, Washington. There are pictures there of a hotel behind the Pentagon. There are reports of a terrorist attack on the Pentagon as well. There certainly has been an explosion. You can see thick smoke coming out from behind the Pentagon. It's been evacuated, and there are reports coming through that the White House, too, has been evacuated. This just a short while after two planes attacked the World Trade Center in New York. President Bush said earlier that they were apparent terrorist attacks. It now looks as if the um, focus of these attacks, if that's what they are, has switched to Washington, to the nerve center of the American government to the Pentagon, the uh, defense headquarters, and possibly to the White House itself. Joining us now is aviation expert Robert Houston. Robert, what can you tell us about the World Trade Center attacks? The World Trade Center attack seems to be an astonishingly well-planned, a, a daring and appalling act. Some of the descriptions that I've heard describe the aircraft involved as small passenger aircraft, but it's, it's far more serious than that. The second aircraft that hit the towers, which there is film of, which um, some of your viewers may have seen, that is a Boeing 737. It is not a small aircraft. It's a 100-seat it's a airliner, and obviously a very calculated multiple hijacking plan with a uh, suicide attack at the end of it has been put into place by whoever is behind this. Robert Houston, can you stay with us? We're going to cross to Washington now, where we're getting reports of attacks, possible attacks on the Pentagon. We're joined now by the BBC's John Lyne. John, what can you tell us? Okay, I'm at Washington National Airport, which is less than a mile from the Pentagon building, which is the headquarters, of course, of the U.S. Defense Department. There is a huge pall of smoke coming from that direction, and people at this airport are saying 
that a Boeing 757 jetliner has crashed into the Pentagon. Now, I cannot confirm that. Uh, certainly something very bad has happened there. There's a horrible smell here. Uh, there's a huge pall of smoke. And there's obviously been some awful thing happened there. But I can't precisely confirm because I cannot see the, the Pentagon building directly in my line of sight. But certainly from that area, there is a massive pile of smoke. They've shut down this airport. I was just trying to get a plane to New York. They've shut down this airport immediately. There are no plane movements, and they're evacuating the area. Uh, it looks as if something very nasty has happened here today indeed. John, thank you for that. We're looking at pictures from Washington, from just behind the Pentagon, the defense headquarters in the United States. John Lyon is at uh, Washington Airport. John, the defense headquarters would be an extraordinary target. We've lost John Lyon. Um, with me in the studio, though, is the BBC's Jim Fish. Jim, a series of coordinated attacks. It looks very much like it, yes. Uh, an extraordinary amount of, as the defense expert was saying, the aviation expert just then, uh, uh, an, an extraordinary amount of coordination required to hijack, if that's the case, not one but three aircraft and crash them into such high-profile targets within minutes or within the uh, space of an hour of each other. Uh, one thing, of course, people will now be looking at the perpetrators, the possible perpetrators of these uh, attacks, uh, and they do bear the same hallmark of the twin attacks, if you recall, back in 1998 on the two U.S. embassies in East Africa, in Nairobi, Kenya, and in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, which took place within minutes of each other, but several hundred miles apart. Uh, they also caused uh, large numbers of casualties. They were blamed by the uh, American authorities on Middle East terrorists, uh, possibly on Osama bin Laden, the Saudi dissident now thought to be in Afghanistan. Uh, if, the, if, these, uh, if these attacks are also to be put down to one, the same organization, I'm sure that uh, American officials will be looking very carefully at that possibility, the possibility that Osama bin Laden may have been involved in this. But, of course, at the moment, it's far too early to tell. At the moment, we're looking at pictures of the World Trade Center in New York, which is ablaze as a result of being attacked by two planes, one uh, 737, which uh, may have been hijacked before it was flown straight into the World Trade Center, but also in Washington, at the heart of U.S. government. There are reports that another plane, a 757, may have flown directly into the heart of the U.S. defense establishment, into the Pentagon. Those are unconfirmed reports, though we have seen pictures of smoke billowing out from the Pentagon. We've got reports that the Washing that Washington is being evacuated, the very heart of Washington, the U.S. Capitol, including the White House. Earlier, the U.S. President George Bush said he thought they were apparent terrorist attacks and that whoever was responsible would be hunted down. The BBC's Orla Geerin joins us. Orla, what can you tell us? Well, what we've had here locally is a claim of responsibility. The initial report came from the Reuters news agency. It was quoting Abu Dhabi television and saying that uh, they had received a call from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, claiming that it was responsible for the plane crashes into both of the trade towers. Now, since then, we've managed to check with local spokesmen for that organization, for the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and two local spokesmen here in the West Bank and Ramallah have denied that. So uh, already there is doubt being cast on this claim, but I think it has to be treated with a great deal of caution at this stage. We're looking at pictures at the moment. Um, two enormous fires. The one on the left is in New York, the World Trade Center, which was attacked by two planes around about 9 o'clock this morning. The one on the right, the Pentagon, the U.S. Defense Headquarters. Some reports say that a plane was flown straight into the Pentagon. That is as yet unconfirmed. A uh, Palestinian organization, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, has apparently claimed responsibility. Orla Geerin joins us now. Orla, what can you tell us about the DFLP? 
Well, I think, first of all, we should say that that claim does have to be treated with caution because local spokesmen for that organization here in the West Bank in Ramallah are denying that they had any involvement. It would be unusual if this organization was involved. It's quite a small splinter faction of the Palestinian Liberation Organization. It's believed to be now about the third largest group. It hasn't been involved in airline hijackings in the past, even back in the 1970s, when Palestinian terror groups were carrying out attacks of that kind and were involved in hijackings. It wasn't this faction, it was another one. So uh, I do think we have to be cautious, but the initial claim was reported by the Reuters news agency. They were quoting Abu Dhabi television and saying that they had received a call from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and in that call they apparently did claim responsibility for both of those uh, aircrafts crashing into the World Trade Towers. Okay, well, uh, thank you for that. We're looking at pictures of two enormous fires, one in New York at the World Trade Center, the other at the Pentagon. They both appear to be the result of deliberate plane crashes, suicide missions. Joining us from Washington is the BBC's Stephen Speech. Stephen, what can you tell us about this situation at the Pentagon? Well, it seems that a third aircraft is, is involved. These are the reports we're getting that a third aircraft uh, has crashed uh, and it's possible that it actually did crash into the Pentagon or somewhere near the Pentagon. So really quite extraordinary. Not only has this attack, as I think we can call it, uh, been carried out in New York, uh, on the World Trade Center, the symbol of uh, American uh, financial economic power, but also at the Pentagon, the heart of the uh, U.S. Military, military complex. Quite extraordinary and I think pretty, pretty shocking for most people here. And what time does this uh, attack at the Pentagon appear to have taken place at, Stephen? Well, it seems to have been uh, shortly after the uh, attacks on the World Trade Center. Now, it's possible that it, it didn't happen that long afterwards, and we've only just found out about it. But I think, yes, I mean, you know, we're talking about within an hour of the attack uh, on the World Trade Center. So clearly, highly coordinated, very well planned uh, by some very, very determined people. The word we get is that the Washington capital is being evacuated. Well, certainly I think government buildings uh, will be evacuated. I think if I was sitting in a U.S. government building here just, just down the road at the State Department or uh, the Treasury, I think I'd be pretty nervous just seeing all these, these places, as it were, going up in smoke one after the other. I think you've got to think, well, what's coming next? And I think clearly a, a sensible move, an inevitable move to evacuate these buildings and uh, just increases the sense of vulnerability uh, that people working for the U.S. government have, and also the sense that uh, there are people out there who uh, just, you know, don't like what they're doing for whatever reason and uh, are going to try and hit them. Was there any sense of preparedness in Washington for anything like this in the last few days? No, I don't think so. I mean, yeah, I, it, it's possible that the authorities here knew, knew, knew something was coming. But uh, one thinks if, if they had any idea that anything on, on this scale was going to happen, they might have actually asked people not to, you know, not to turn up for work or uh, have taken the precaution of evacuating these buildings earlier on. So I don't think among people here there was any, any, sense, of, uh, any sense of that. I mean, it was curious. Just the other day I was, I was walking through Washington. And it did strike me that uh, there are so many uh, uh, prominent people, prominent buildings here. In a sense, this is the heart of heart of uh, power, the heart of the world's only superpower, and a, a very, very tempting target for people who want to get at the United States. And it does call into question, you know, just is it possible to uh, provide absolute security? President Bush wants to provide a, a missile defense shield for the United States to protect against uh, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Some people think that's possible, others think it isn't. And yet we have here a few planes hijacked in the United States and uh, flown flying low, avo avoiding detection by radar and uh, carrying out these attacks. So it's a pretty sobering day for Americans. What's the latest information we have, Stephen, on those planes? You said um, that uh, they'd been hijacked. Do we know that for certain? This information is still coming in. I mean, we've had some pretty credible reports, and it's certainly being investigated by the FBI, uh, that the planes uh, were hijacked, uh, I think a couple of them from, from, from United Airlines. But uh, we, we, we still need to get absolute confirmation of that. Um, uh, and now, of course, we know that uh, all the planes, it seems, planes right around the states are being grounded. So the authorities clearly taking this very seriously, as you would expect them to. Stephen Sveej, thank you for that. We're just going to take a, another look at the um, 
pictures of the second plane as it flew into the side of the World Trade Center in New York shortly after an earlier plane had attacked the other Trade Center building. Right down in downtown Manhattan, you can see an enormous explosion there. It appears to have been a coordinated attack because in Washington, the Pentagon has also suffered an attack or buildings close to the Pen Pentagon appear to have been attacked also by planes, large planes, possibly as large as a 757. This appears to be a terrorist attack. A Palestinian organization, the DFLP, was said to have been responsible, but a senior official for that organization has denied responsibility. So at the present, we do not know who was responsible for these attacks in the United States at the World Trade Center in New York and at the Pentagon in Washington. Washington has been evacuated. The heart of Washington government op offices are being evacuated. You can see at the moment pictures from around the Pentagon, um, rescue workers trying to put out the blaze. We saw an ambulance go by a few minutes ago. Stephen Speech is in Washington. Stephen, what's the latest information we have? Well, the latest information is that uh, government buildings around the city, around Washington, D.C., have been evacuated. There is a fire going on at or around the Pentagon. It appears that a third plane crashed into or very nearby the Pentagon, in addition to the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center. No reports of casualties here in Washington, but I think many casualties, uh, certainly perhaps five more dead in the World Trade Center and many, many injured. The, joining us now is Greg Barrow in New York. Greg, what's the latest information from the World Trade Center? Well, the latest we have is that uh, the whole area has been sealed off. The police and security uh, personnel are down there trying to clear members of the public away. This was a very, very busy time of the morning in New York, just as everybody was going into their offices. So it couldn't really have come at a worse time. And I think uh, uh, that the search is already beginning for those who may be to blame for this, this incident that has really, truly shocked people, not just here in, in New York, but also around the country. Any word on... Uh... It's unclear how full those offices would have been, but, but there could have been hundreds, maybe thousands of people in those offices at the time that the planes impacted into the building. So potentially there are huge numbers of casualties, but really too early to say precisely what's happening at this stage. When we were talking to eyewitnesses earlier, they said that uh, the situation seemed to be out of control, that the explosions were just running and it looks as if the, the tower, one of the towers, has fallen down. Is that your understanding? Well, it, this is just such an unexpected event. It's something that nobody could plan for. Obviously, in 1993, there was an explosion at the World Trade Center. A bomb was set off. But I think even in people's wildest imaginations, nobody could have foreseen two planes crashing into each tower of the, the Twin Trade Center. And the fact that this has happened, and. Uh, such an unusual event, such a shocking event, perhaps has stunned not just the emergency services, but, but everyone around. We're looking at the very disturbing pictures from New York of the World Trade Center. Only one tower is standing. The other has collapsed. You can see an extraordinary amount of smoke billowing out. It's the result of an attack by two planes which flew into each of the towers at around 9 o'clock this morning. It appears to have been a del deliberate terrorist attack, a suicide mission. Only one of the World Trade Center towers is standing. In Washington, we've um, yeah, also seen an attack on the Pentagon, or close to the Pentagon, the U.S. Um, defense headquarters. The White House and the Capitol have been evacuated. These are apparent terrorist attacks. What's, that's what the U.S. President George Bush said. And a U.S. official citing a transmission from the plane says one of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. The Federal Aviation Authority has grounded all planes for the moment and closed all airports. All of the major road links into New York have also been closed, but we don't yet have any word on the extent of injuries or possible fatalities from the attacks.
Stephen's speech is um, in New York, uh, in Washington, I'm sorry, and joins us now. Stephen, what news have you got? Well, the latest I have for you is the Associated Press News Agency is saying that uh, the plane that crashed here in Washington crashed into a helicopter uh, la launch pad near the Pentagon. So it seems, uh, if that report is correct, that the Pentagon itself has not been hit. But there is a fire uh, in the vicinity. Uh, the White House and other government buildings and, of course, the Pentagon have been evacuated. But certainly no reports of casualties here in Washington. We're looking at smoke billowing out of the World Trade Center. An hour ago, it was attacked by a plane. And then a second plane went into the other World Trade Center tower in New York. A short while ago, that tower collapsed onto the ground in huge puffs of smoke. There's been panic around at the World Trade Center. It was at a very busy time of day. These appear to have been terrorist attacks. A Palestinian organization, the DFLP, appeared to have said that it was responsible. That has now been denied. It's not known who is responsible for these attacks at the uh, landmark World Trade Center in New York and against the U.S. defense headquarters in the Pentagon. Another plane appears to have flown into that. At least one of the planes that attacked the World Trade Center, it's believed, was hijacked and had originally flown from Boston. The U.S. President George Bush said he will hunt down those who are responsible for attacking the United States in this way. With us here in the studio is Jim Fish. Jim, what's the latest information we have? Well, it's a scene of absolute and utter chaos and devastation that we're looking at. Uh, we have, uh, it has appeared in the last few minutes that the second, the south uh, tower of the World Trade Center collapsed after it was struck uh, about an hour ago by that second aircraft. We can't, because of the extent of that devastation, the, the thick cloud of smoke that's now covering uh, most of Manhattan, uh, it's impossible to tell to what extent, uh, what, what the extent of the damage is, and I think for that reason we'll also, it'll take some time to find out uh, how great the, the casualty toll is, but we can only speculate that if that second tower has collapsed or partially collapsed, then there will be uh, sheer destruction and devastation on the ground. Uh, and because, it's, uh, because it, it was such a busy time of the day, early morning in Manhattan, uh, we do know that the security services had sealed off the area around, uh, around the, 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 the trade towers. But uh, I, I'm afraid to say that it does seem that the casualty toll will have, uh, will have climbed disastrously if the second tower has collapsed because there will have been hundreds, possibly thousands of people within the vicinity of that tower. And we're seeing layer upon layer of tragedy here. The original planes that uh, went into the uh, World Trade Centers were apparently themselves hijacked. At least one of them was. The latest news we've got is that it was an American Airlines plane, possibly with a number of passengers on it, which went straight into the top of the World Trade Center. Then we're seeing the World Trade Center on fire at a very busy time of, of the morning, full of office workers. One of the, the blocks collapsed. We don't know to what extent it was successfully evacuated before it happened. So scenes of extraordinary carnage and scenes of extraordinary destruction in New York at the World Trade Center, one of the landmarks of the Manhattan skyline. Over in Washington, another attack, this time against the U.S. government itself. We've got pictures from the Pentagon close by to the Pentagon, another plane, possibly also hijacked, went into or near the Pentagon. Smoke billowing from there. The fires appear to be out of control. We don't yet know whether there have been any casualties. One can only imagine. The word from Washington is that the White House, the Pentagon, and all government offices have been evacuated. All planes in the United States have been grounded and airports have been shut down. The United States has really gone into emer emergency mode now, hasn't it, Jim? Yes, and the extraordinary thing is that because of the extent of these attacks, these disasters, I think uh, the, uh, there's, there's a sheer, there's an overload of the emergency services and, of course, the, the news, the information that, that is emerging from both New York and Washington has been restricted as a result. I think they are working flat out just to try and get to grips with the scale 
of these disasters. So we're unable to know, we can't tell you uh, yet what the extent of the casualties is. Uh, this is this is the very first the first few minutes, the first hour uh, of uh, of these events taking place. Um, uh, but it is it, it's impossible to say at the moment how the emergency services are dealing with these uh, twin strikes. It, it, it seems that the, the the New York Trade World Trade Center attack uh, has now been complicated by the collapse or partial collapse of one of those towers. Uh, you can see by the extent of the thick cloud of smoke that's enveloping the entire area that emergency work by the fire services, by the rescue services, must be difficult, if not impossible, uh, reaching up to the very top of those towers. Uh, it's difficult to say. There have been helicopters uh, on the scene, but of course now uh, their job has been further complicated by that uh, the sheer thick weight of that smoke uh, enveloping the, the two towers or what's left of them. This is the second major attack against the World Trade Center. The first was um, in 1993, a bomb attack by Islamic uh, militants. What we haven't ever seen before though is a major attack against the Pentagon in Washington, the heart of the U.S. government. It will shake up Washington considerably, won't it, Jim? You can't think of a uh, more direct hit uh, into striking at the very heart of U.S. government, apart from, of course, the White House itself. And it's for that reason, I'm sure, that although President Bush is not in the White House, he's been in Florida uh, this morning, uh, the, that's for that very reason that the White House and all other government buildings in Washington have been evacuated. Uh, I think the, the, uh, the U.S. administration must now be thinking what other possible targets must be uh, looming up uh, if, the, uh, if the heart of its defense establishment has now been hit, um, plus the two Twin Towers, the symbol of uh, U.S. financial uh, business uh, in, in the United States and around the world, I think they will be thinking now uh, whether or not there, is, uh, there are other targets that have been, uh, have been selected. And there are concerns about the United Nations um, headquarters in New York as well. Joining us from New York is uh, the BBC's Greg Barrow. Greg, what's the latest information you have? Well, not much to add, only that uh, we're witnessing the, the collapse of those two World Trade Center towers that uh, were hit this morning and huge amounts of smoke and debris billowing out from the bottom of those buildings, spreading down the, the streets uh, two or three blocks around that area. So uh, a whole area, several hundred meters in circumference, has now been uh, affected by this explosion. And, and one can only imagine the scenes at the bottom there uh, when this happened, as the emergency services were trying to evacuate those buildings. A job made extremely difficult by the sheer amount of smoke. Yes, and uh, we should also mention the time that this uh, attack took place. This was one of the busiest times of the morning, rush hour, as people were going to, to work in one of the most heavily populated areas, uh, uh, cities in America. So. The, the, the problems that those emergency services are facing are just huge. We're just looking at uh, a lone helicopter battling against the clouds above the World Trade Center. The um, emergency services must be extremely stretched. Yes, I, I think visibility down there is, 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 is just one of the many problems. Also the concern that maybe the second tower could go tumbling down. These two of the tallest buildings in the world um, when they fall, the amount of bricks and mortar and glass and debris cascading down in a, in a very, very densely populated area is bound to cause yet more casualties. So I think the main aim of the emergency services at the moment is to get as many people as possible away from those buildings. Any word from the local hospitals, Greg? Not yet. I, I, I think uh, that they will just be sort of completely overburdened with the, the immediate uh, injuries. I think one of the, the greatest difficulties is getting people through the traffic and through the streets and to those emergency services as, as quickly as possible. I think you can probably see the huge crowds of people in that area, which will only impede efforts to, to, to get uh, the injured to hospital. The picture in New York there. There's also been an attack... Um, in uh, Washington, we've got reports that there's been a second attack at the Pentagon earlier. These pictures are from New York, I believe. 
We saw earlier that um, one of the towers of the World Trade Center had collapsed. There are considerable fears about whether the second tower will be able to stand up for much longer. And that is, of course, hampering the efforts of the uh, rescue services. About uh, 9 o'clock this morning, we saw two planes going straight into the World Trade Center. And you can see the picture there, smoke still billowing, the fires completely out of control. It's making the job of the rescue services extremely difficult. We've seen a few helicopters trying to get to the scene, but visibility must be extremely difficult for them. Jim Fish is with me here. Jim, we're not getting very much information at the moment as to injuries, as to the number of people that may have been caught up in this terrible, terrible accident, no, in this terrible it's, incident. It's difficult enough for the emergency services to actually gain access to the sites uh, of these, uh, of these uh, terrible uh, events. The, uh, particularly in New York, the pictures we're looking at, uh, you can see now the, the uh, thick pall of smoke that's enveloping the, the scene. One of the other problems there, of course, is that this, uh, these fumes will be extremely toxic. That'll, be, that'll mean that only people with proper breathing apparatus will be able to get anywhere near uh, the uh, rescue work. Uh, I, I think that's probably going to be restricting work as well. We've got an eyewitness here telling us um, about the scene there at the World Trade Center in New York. Complete mayhem, but everybody, well. few people took charge and they kept calm and kept moving people down. So it's, thank God. Halwani Tarek. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. A warning to the U.S., that uh, eyewitness said. You can see people looking up to the skies in disbelief in the United States, in New York. The World Trade Center there, almost entirely obliterated by smoke. Only one tower is still standing. The other has been brought down by an astonishing suicide bomb attack, twin suicide missions by two planes, one of which at least appears to have been a hijacked United Airways 737. You can see the skyline over New York is just a mass of cloud, a lone helicopter trying to find its way in. It happened at one of the busiest times, in the 9 o'clock morning rush hour, and it's still not apparent who attacked, who is responsible for this scene of carnage. Over in Washington, there were, there were scenes at the, the Pentagon, similar scenes, smoke billowing out because the Pentagon, the U.S. Defense Headquarters, was also under attack. One, possibly two plane attacks. The BBC's Stephen Speech is there. Does it look as if there have been two attacks on the Pentagon, Stephen? So far, I think we're talking about one. Now, that may change, but at the moment, it seems to have been just the one aircraft. I mean, we say, I'm saying just one aircraft. I mean, it is an extraordinary event for an aircraft to crash, it seems, next to the Pentagon. It appears the building itself was not hit. Uh, the reports we're getting is that there was a huge explosion which threw people off their feet inside the Pentagon. That's according to U.S. officials and uh, eyewitnesses. And uh, they're talking about an airliner, so we're talking about a, a large vehicle, a large plane crashing uh, near the Pentagon, it seems, uh, just by a helicopter launch pad. Uh, and the one reporter who happened to be inside the building at the time, she's been quoted as saying that she was thrown to the ground by the force of the blast. an eyewitness just coming up now. There are the press agents and everybody else that went the other way as everybody else went this way. When you saw this collapse taking place, could you see if there were a lot of people on the ground near the building as it no, was happening? No, I was, I was further north than you were, but I was dead looking at 6th Avenue. The view you see of both towers as you right. come down 6th Avenue. Right. So, and right. most of this fallout stops about there. An eyewitness to the uh, World Trade Center attack, an extremely audacious terrorist attack against the World Trade Centers in New York. Um, Jim Fish, the BBC's Jim Fish, has the latest information. We are now getting more information about what may have happened, may have led up to these, uh, these incidents, these attacks. Uh, General Richard Myers, who's the vice chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, has been reported by one of the news agencies, Associated Press, as saying that uh, one hijacked 
plane was seen, was known about by officials heading from the New York area to Washington. Of course, they, they wouldn't have had time if that was the aircraft that hit close to the Pentagon. They obviously didn't have time to give out a, an alert. Um, the other two aircraft, it's possible we have one U unnamed U.S. official saying that one was hijacked uh, after takeoff from Boston and a third was hijacked from New York, New, Let's New just Jersey. Let's listen to what this eyewitness in New York is saying. And we, we looked out at it, all of a sudden, boom, it, it, it seemed like it wasn't even real. And you know, we came running over here closer to the place and all of a sudden we saw the other explosion. I don't know, I don't know. You know, that's all I saw. I saw a couple of people jumping out of the other building. I seen two or three people jump out of the building. The first one, the, I don't know if that's number one tower or number two tower. It's unreal. Panic on the streets of New York there, are people running away from the vicinity of the World Trade Center where earlier two planes slammed into the sides of the twin towers of the, the World Trade Center. They're clearly being sent as far away as possible. Scenes of fear and pandemonium in New York. As you can see, the, the, the twin towers, one is already down, the other is billowing with smoke, the fire still out of control. The people should be as close as this is perhaps rather worrying. It happened um, in the middle of the nine o'clock rush hour. And you can see that um, the police are trying to clear the streets and get people as far away from the building as possible. Perhaps they're worried that um, the second Twin Tower might collapse. We saw the first come down with a terrible bang. You can see the fire still raging. Let's just hear what this man has to say. I was in B Tower. B Tower? A, 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 a Tower. What floor were you on? A B1. What floor? The first one. What happened? Tell me. When I, a big explosion happened. Some guy came out. His, his skin was all off. I helped him out. This is him all over. There's people jumping out of windows. I've seen at least 14 people jumping out of windows. It's, it's, it's horrific. I can't believe this is happening. Uh, anything else that you saw? Were you there for the second uh, hit yeah. by the plane? After, about 10 minutes later, the second building went off. Did you see it? Yes, I saw it. It, it just blew up. A big explosion. People started running. It was just chaos everywhere. People jumping out. People just kept jumping and jumping and jumping. And you could still see they were alive because they were flailing around. The FBI has already stepped in to investigate. It could be possibly uh, a terrorist strike. It could be. It could be because it was the first one went off, and then 10 back minutes up, later, this up. just blew up out of nowhere. Hard to think that that would just be accidental. No, I don't think it would be accidental. Back it up, folks. Back it up. Kenny Jahanneman. Spell your name. J O H A N N E M A N N. And you were working there. As yes, I was right there. I was, the B, I was down in the telling what he saw: a huge fireball at the World Trade Center as two planes slammed into the side of these twin towers in the bottom of M Manhattan. The uh, security um, personnel were trying to move them along. The streets of New York are being cleared, possibly for fear that uh, the second twin tower will come down. Earlier, we saw one of the towers collapse in an enormous thud of debris and smoke. It's an extremely dangerous situation still in the scenes in the streets of New York. In Washington, meanwhile, there's been an attack just near the, the Pentagon. These are pictures of, in, of New York. You can see FBI personnel trying to clear the streets. The FBI are investigating these attacks. The U.S. President has said that uh, those responsible will be hunted down and uh, brought to justice, but that's a long way off yet. At the moment, the most important thing is simply trying to stabilize the situation, putting out the fires, and helping the many hundreds of people who have been caught up in one of the most audacious attacks in the United States. You can see just how upset and shocked people are. It happened at one of the busiest times. And then we saw smoke coming out, and everybody started running out, and we saw the plane on the other side of the building, and there was smoke everywhere, and people are jumping out the windows. Over there, they're jumping out the windows, I guess, because they're trying to save themselves. I don't know. And, and I don't know.
everybody just doesn't know where to go. They won't let, everything is blocked off. You can't even, they're telling us to get out, but there's nowhere to go. And then I heard that another plane hit, and if you go over by there, you can see the people jumping out the window. They're jumping out the window right now. Oh, my God. All right, ma'am, thank you. The panic of an eyewitness at uh, the World Trade Center talking about people jumping out of the windows of the World Trade Center to try and escape the collapsing World Trade Center as a result of two suicide plane attacks. Joining us from Washington is Stephen Speech. There's also been attack, an attack near to the Pentagon, the U.S. Defense Headquarters. Stephen, what can you tell us? It seems that a large aircraft, it's being described as an airliner, uh, crashed into uh, just near the Pentagon, near the west side of the Pentagon, uh, around a, near a helicopter launch pad or on a helicopter launch pad. There was a big explosion. Eyewitnesses and officials say they were, they were thrown to the ground by the force of the blast. It appears there have been some injuries. One news agency, uh, uh, AFP, is talking about seven injuries. No reports of any fatalities from that uh, incident here in Washington. But the Pentagon's been evacuated, the White House evacuated, and uh, various other government buildings. So a sense of a great shock and a great alertness here in Washington. And presumably all the airports in the United States have been grounded as a result of this. Three planes apparently hijacked. Well, certainly, yes, at least one of them hijacked, we think. And uh, yes, commercial flights have been completely suspended throughout the country. And we're also getting reports uh, that Virgin Atlantic have cancelled their flights actually into the country. So it seems that international flights may also be affected. I mean, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to overstate the magnitude of this, uh, both in terms of the terrible tragedy in New York and also just in terms of the symbolic power of these attacks on such prominent targets by some very, very determined people. Stephen's speech in Washington. So at least one of the planes that went into the World Trade Center appears to have been hijacked. Um, we don't really know much about the other two. There's been an attack on the other World Trade Center and also the Pentagon, near to the Pentagon in Washington, the defense headquarters. Who is responsible? That is still unclear. The Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine have denied being behind the attack. The DFLP has no uh, relation to this uh, accident or this uh, incident. Uh, we have always been against uh, terroristic actions, against civilian uh, targets, and especially outside the occupied territories. Uh, but in spite of that, uh, we deny our responsibility, but we call upon the uh, American administration to review uh, their uh, attitude and their policy towards the Palestinian question because this policy arouses the uh, anger and the hatred uh, of our people and of all uh, Arab and Islamic peoples and uh, it's liable actually to uh, uh, to uh, harm uh, the uh, interests of the United States in our region and therefore it has to be reviewed denial from the Palestinian group, the DFLP, that it was responsible for attacking the World Trade Center. We've also got reports coming through that a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department in Washington. That's according to senior law enforcement officials. Let me just remind you, there have been several attacks on the nerve centers of the U.S. administration. We're looking at pictures from New York of the uh, World Trade Center, which at 9 a.m. this morning came under attack by two planes. You can see the um, fire engines there trying to uh, put out the fire. It's been raging for over an hour at the moment and uh, still no sign of it coming under control. The first, went in, the first plane went in at about 9 o'clock. A short while later, another aircraft appears to have crashed near the Pentagon in Washington. The White House and Capitol in Washington have been evacuated. These are apparently terrorist attacks. That's what the U.S. President George Bush called them. A U.S. official citing a transmission from one of the planes said that it, the, the first plane that crashed into the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. The Federal Aviation Authority has grounded all planes for the moment and closed 
all airports. All the major road links into New York have also been closed. We have no word yet at the moment on the extent of injuries from the attacks. This report from Mike Waldridge. This was the second of the two explosions. A plane comes in from the right of the picture and appears to be about to pass behind the South Tower. Next comes a huge explosion with debris showering out from the tower and down towards the streets below. The upper floors of this tower then become immediately obscured by the billowing smoke. This was just a few minutes after there'd been another explosion near the top of the North Tower. Eyewitnesses said this tower appeared to be struck by a plane that came in low and then hit the building at a slight angle. Again, within seconds, the upper floors were consumed by flames and smoke. As panic erupted at ground level in New York's financial center at the start of the business day, the city and the country tried to make sense of it. Many of those who'd seen it happen said they were assuming these were planes that had flown deliberately into the two landmark buildings. It was simply hard to believe otherwise. The aircraft seemed to make no attempt to swerve away from the towers. As news of the casualties began to come in, the administration firmed up this growing belief that it seemed to be a terrorist attack. The FBI said it was investigating reports that two planes had been hijacked before the attack. And then, as New Yorkers were watching it all happen again, the towers were struck by bombers in 1993. Less than an hour later came unconfirmed reports that something similar may have happened at the Pentagon in Washington. There were reports of an explosion at the heart of the U.S. defense establishment, and this was the scene afterwards. The White House was evacuated too. Mike Wooldridge, BBC News. So these are the pictures now. It's Nick Gowing uh, replacing Nisha Pillay, and uh, you can see still the plumes of smoke. Uh, we do have news that a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. Most uh, offices of state in Washington have now been evacuated. Uh, the Pentagon is now uh, very much uh, subject to a major fire and uh, emergency alert. There you have pictures uh, in downtown New York in the area, I think, from what I can see, near the World Trade Center. One of the towers has collapsed. Both towers have now collapsed. Uh, we gather this is uh, within about an hour and a half of the towers being hit by a hijacked plane, which has been confirmed as an American Airlines plane, which had set off from Boston bound for Los Angeles. Uh, American Airlines 11, uh, according to authorities in Boston. The Federal Aviation Administration has now grounded all planes right across the United States, fearful of what might happen next and what other intentions those who've coordinated this attack might have. President Bush, who was speaking down in Sarasota, uh, in Florida, called this an apparent terrorist attack. That's literally as the news was coming through. This is the scene now from uh, downtown New York. Uh, one can imagine the chaos there, but also this is going to have a massive effect on the infrastructure of the United States on the eastern seaboard. There, the Pentagon, you can still see the smoke rising from one part. Apparently, the airliner hit the helicopter pad, which is uh, just across the main freeway uh, from the Potomac River. Uh, that's eyewitnesses saw the tail of the plane go into that helicopter pad, which is uh, just outside one of the main door, one of many doors in the Pentagon, which of course is the Defense Department. That is only one small part of the Pentagon, because below ground, if my memory serves me correct, there are at least seven floors for built. This was built expecting some kind of nuclear attack one day, and that's where the most heavily defended and protected parts of the Pentagon are well down deep into the bowels of Virginia there across the river. Here we have um, the center of New York. Not only the World Trade Center, but reports saying the UN headquarters has been evacuated with people uh, being ushered down uh, into the basement of the UN headquarters, which is uh, a little bit uptown from the World Trade Center, which is right down on the southern tip of Manhattan. Well, let's go to another witness uh, of the World Trade Center attack, and he said he saw people jumping from the building. And we, we looked out at it, all of a sudden, boom, it, it, it seemed like it wasn't even real. And he, we came running over here closer to the place, and all of a sudden we saw the other explosion. I don't know, I don't know. You know, that's all I saw. 
I saw a couple of people jumping out of the other building. I seen two or three people jump out of the building. The first one, the, I don't know if that's number one tower or number two tower. It's unreal. Downtown New York there, and there the scene across Manhattan. A scene where, in normal times, you'd expect to see at least two towers of the World Trade Center. They have now both collapsed following the hijack of at least one aircraft which was flown directly into one of the towers. That collapsed about 40 minutes ago. The second one collapsed a few minutes ago. There's the shot of uh, the southern tip of Manhattan. Over to Washington to Stephen Sweet. Stephen, what do you have? Well, the latest is uh, that in addition to the attack on the Pentagon, uh, the fire there, the airliner crashing into the helicopter launch pad. There has been a car bomb outside the State Department, uh, the headquarters of U.S. foreign policy. The building's been evacuated. We don't have reports of any casualties. President Bush, who has been in Florida uh, this week, is heading back to Washington. And we also have, I'm, uh, this is quoting the CBS television network, uh, this is to give some idea of potentially the scale of the tragedy in New York. CBS are saying, that uh, of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center, uh, one was from Boston, the other was from Dallas, and it's possible that on board there may have been 150 people. Now, what is, uh, is the scene in Washington at the moment? Uh, can you see uh, out across uh, uh, to the smoke across the Potomac and the level of smoke which is coming from there? It's difficult for me uh, here in the studio to, s to see that. But uh, I think a sense of great shock here in Washington. Uh, so far, it seems that in terms of casualties, we don't have anything like the sort of tragedy that's unfolding in New York. But uh, in terms of the, the explosion that went off at the Pentagon, knocked people to the ground, car bomb at the State Department, I think uh, a lot of government buildings, if not all of them, have been evacuated. Certainly the Capitol, uh, the Congress building up on the hill, the State Department, the White House, the Pentagon, the Treasury, all those uh, seem to have been evacuated. And I wouldn't be surprised if all the other government buildings have been evacuated too. In recent years, um, certainly the Security Secret Service, the FBI, and all the intelligence agencies have insisted that there be much better protection uh, from ground attacks, certainly, uh, against uh, those who might wish to drive or try to drive up to the White House, Congress, or whatever. But clearly, this is not enough uh, in this kind of situation. Well, we know that the United States, uh, some people would say that they're obsessed with security here, but clearly, however far you take security precautions, one has to ask the question, is it ever going to be enough? We know that President Bush wants to defend the United States from uh, attack by missiles with his missile defense program. Some people think that's possible, others think it isn't. Uh, but when you have people who are absolutely determined to carry out these attacks, uh, determined, it, it seems, to lose their own lives in the process, it really does make us ask the question, how far is it possible to uh, uh, avoid incidents like this. Planes can fly at low altitudes. Uh, uh, they can avoid detection by radar. Uh, we had the incident 20 years ago, this is going back some way in time, where a, a young German pilot flew into Moscow, into Red Square, after flying, flying right through Soviet air defenses. Uh, and it seems that uh, even today, it's still quite possible for that sort of thing to happen. So of course, we're gonna have people uh, raising the issue of greater security here. But uh, as I said, we have to ask the question, is that possible to, to really totally protect these buildings? Now, uh, for those of you who are just joining BBC World at uh, this point uh, and wondering if you're watching an unreal scene, this is a real scene from downtown New York shortly after this plane crashed into the World Trade Center. It had been hijacked a short time earlier on a trip, we believe, from Boston. We understand it was an American Airlines plane en route from Boston to Los Angeles flight American Airlines 11, and that was what began what has been a cataclysmic two hours in the United States because a second plane was hijacked, a third plane was hijacked uh, close to Washington and has been flown into uh, an area which is just to the side of the Pentagon across the river from the White House, the Congress, the uh, executive buildings, the treasury buildings, the World Bank, and all the main offices of state. That a reminder of the terrible incident which began this uh, trigger, this timetable of uh, dreadful events across the east coast of uh, America. There is the Pentagon, uh, the uh, southern part of the 
defense headquarters, the brain of uh, the American uh, political, at least, defense system. Of course, they have a large number of bunkers and other uh, secure areas scattered right across the United States, down in Florida, Cheyenne Mountain, across in Colorado, many other secure areas. And indeed, there are provisions within the American procedures for the president, uh, secretary of state, and others uh, to take shelter We're along with uh, those who have to make the critical decisions. Here the scene on the ground uh, in New York, uh, and uh, not that I'm there, but it does look as if you can see, uh, you can get a sense of the enormous amounts of dust and debris and everything else which have been blown and literally across in a typhoon uh, from the bottom of the World Trade Center after first the first tower, then the second tower collapsed at the bottom of Manhattan. That uh, distinct landmark uh, at the bottom uh, of Manhattan. And that's the, the scene uh, in what is left in that area alongside the World Trade Center. Ola Gerin, uh, our correspondent, is joining me from Jerusalem. Ola, how is this being viewed from the Middle East? Well, there's an enormous sense of shock here. People have been glued to their television screens with mounting horror watching the events unfold. Uh, I should say that it's still in no way clear that uh, the events taking place in the United States are at all connected to this region, although obviously that must be the fear, and there's a great deal of speculation of that kind. We did earlier on have one anonymous claim of responsibility that was made to a television station in Abu Dhabi and a caller claiming to represent a radical Palestinian faction, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, claimed that uh, they had carried out the hijackings and they had attacked the World Trade Center. Now I should stress that since then, official spokesmen for that organization have been at pains to say that they were not involved. They